brought to you by Knights of Awakening. This is The Labyrinth. Today, we're going to talk about a couple of little, little bit of different topics here. As always, my goal is to try to get us under the 20 minute mark and under the 15 if I can, and to enlighten you, inspire you, and pass on a little bit of my knowledge and wisdom. It's been brought to my attention that you know, I don't really cover my own methods all that often and all that much, or put a lot of my own flavor into this. So, we're going to hit on some, some methods that I find are valuable within uh, mysticism, at least in the mystical combat arts right now. This is doing harm to another, and I'm going to cover real quick why the fact that I'm going to cover it. Towards the end, I'm going to plug a group in that I'm a part of that I feel is very helpful, and we cover a lot of this, as well as healing and other things in that group, and it's more mystically focused. So, that in mind for you, my valued listeners, I also wanted to uh, announce that from here forward, I'm going to be doing a bit more of what is useful for me on the labyrinth, and... What I mean by that is if the topic is not something that I'm working with directly or not really involved in, or if it's something political or things like that where I have a great disdain for it, you won't really be seeing it anymore. I've grown tired in my old age, semi-old age, oldish age, I guess, right? Something like that. I've grown tired of wasting my time, so I won't be. Instead, Labyrinth's going to be a little bit more focused on things that I think are incredibly valuable. I'm still going to be doing a lot on the nightly virtues and things of that nature because I feel they're important. And with that, let's take a look at the nightly reason for talking about curses. You, my friend, if you do not know how curses work, nor do you understand the energies about them or the defensive arts, are vulnerable. You're weak. Well, maybe not weak, but you're weaker than you would be if you understood why a curse does what it does. And without a little bit of practice, you're vulnerable. Moreover, you're only going to block so long. And this is very true. Whether or not your return fire is a raw force of will, good old Justin Bain style, where you just blast them back with a force of psychic will and, and determination that runs them over, and he will if you curse him. He will. He will knock you on your ass if you try. Or you use ceremonial high magic. Or you use sympathetic magic. You're going to need something to return fire with because you're going to not be able to block forever. And I use Justin as a really good example because I've known the man for years and I can tell you that attacking him would be the worst thing you could do uh, next to attacking me or maybe like one or two other people that I know because he's going to auto-backlash on you. He's not going to be like, I need to put a defensive circle down. He might do that for the first, like, five seconds to protect himself, but then he's going to wipe you from creation. Why you need to learn curses because there are no laws. You are the enforcer. You are the only power that can protect yourself in a magical one-on-one -on -one duel or battle. That's it. You could come to me, but you're going to wind up paying me. Um, you could go to Justin, and if he's got the time, he might aid you. You could go to, you know, some other people that might have the training and skill, but they may charge you, or they may simply not have the time, or will, or maybe they'll get in the middle of it and someone will knock them on their ass. Not knowing how to defend yourself is called vulnerability, be it in the martial arts or the mystical arts. So, you need to know how to return fire. And a binding, I'm going to bind this person, is only going to last for so long because bindings don't cause any kind of psychological repercussion other than to piss the person off while they're tied up. If you don't believe me, try tying myself or Justin or any other KOA host up and see how long it is before we break your nose once we get free. No one is so passive that binding them is going to be beneficial to you long term. So curses are a way of throwing a punch, and we have no police. And you may believe in karma, but I'm 
expert within these fields, I'll tell you that your definition of karma doesn't fall within the original definitions. You're thinking of, of some kind of just something that you know, deals out an equal repercussion for negative actions. And my response to that is that that has always been called responding. And if you're not going to respond, the universe isn't going to do it for you. You may have some natural backlash come off of you. So it's important to know how to defend yourself, which means, you know, not just blocking, but attacking. So we're going to hit on a couple simple, very effective curses, and these are going to fall under the category of sympathetic magic, with a little bit of ritual thrown in. What you're going to need for the combined total of these curses, if you're doing your shopping list at the five minute and some change mark here, is one candle of each color, red, orange, green, blue, violet, and indigo, okay? And a lemon, a marker, a knife, something to carve into the candles, the same knife you use for the lemon. You may or may not be able to get away with that, depending on what your own preferences are on disposing of tools at the end of a ritual. And use your best judgment. And some salt. And you can get other herbs to add to this. They won't be necessary. You also are going to need a picture of the intended asshole, other a victim, or a, um, a target. I'm going to presume you're going to use this for good purposes. Someone's coming after you, so you're going back after them, or maybe justice just can't be dealt because there's no system to deal it where you're at. Or maybe, maybe the laws failed you. The other thing to point out on this Bad people will find this knowledge regardless. Good people are only going to really find it if it's brought to them. So yeah, we're going to talk curses today. We're going to, we're going to go how to use these little implements. Any amount of meditation, energy work, or focus will amplify these techniques. Okay? The better you are at the basics, the better this will be. The more time you spend with these things, the better they will be. But a short amount of time will have more results than no time whatsoever. Because you're dealing with mental linking on all of this. I hope all of this is, is making sense. If I'm losing anyone at any point in these videos, please send me a message. Put it in the comments. You know, while you're liking, sharing, and subscribing, put it in the comments, you know? All right. The first one of these is going to be the chakra curse. I have talked about this at a different group, which I'll mention later. With this, you take the picture of the, the douche in question, and you're going to carve the chakra symbols into the bottom of these candles in corresponding color to the chakras. Now you can choose what direction you wipe the chakras out at, and you can use herbs to associate it. And you can meditate, visualizing this person's energy in that candle. In fact, that's your best bet. The longer you do that, the more effective this will be. But it's not necessarily going to take all that long. For the novice, who has no training whatsoever, I always recommend an hour. For the adept, who can create the mental link just by looking and going like that, because they've trained their mind to do it, and they have the years to back it up, and I mean years. I suggest five to ten minutes per candle, and to spread this out over a course of days. Do not do all these candles at once. That would make it too obvious, and they might respond. Instead, take chakra candle with chakra, you know, inscription on it. If you cannot draw the chakra inscription, congratulations, you're me. With a knife, at least. Do so with a marker. If you cannot do so with the marker, carve the name of the chakra into the candle. Whew, yeah, right, I know. Impressive stuff. Make sure you're matching your colors up. You know, your root is red. Do some research on chakras before you do this, too. Understand what it is you're draining from your victim. Plant that on the picture. After visualizing it, visualize that energy draining out of them as you light it. Hold that visualization for at least five minutes for the, you know, the, the adept. Um, you can split that hour for the true novice that knows nothing in between visualizing the energy in the candle and visualizing it burning through, you know, use some common sense on this. 
And that's the chakra curse, and that will slow most people down. That will slow me down a little bit, in fact. Um, not as well, because I'm aware of it, and I know how it works, and I am mentally resistant by knowing the method now. But it's a good base level start. It would, be, it would fall, I guess, under a vampiric curse. Um, it's sympathetic magic. There's not a whole lot of ritual, although you can add ritual to this if you choose. You can call upon other forces to aid you in this. Um, if you do this against innocent people, eventually someone like me is going to show up. And, well, um, when I burn your shockers out, they're never going to come back. So, my advisement, don't do this against people that don't deserve it. The next one had particularly good results with this one. Passed on to me by my old former mentor. It's called the lemon curse. You take that lemon, you visualize it as the person, and you make a symbol out of the letters of their name. It's going to take a little while. You might want to pre-draw the symbol. You make a symbol, what they call a chaos magic seal, or sigil. You make a symbol out of the letters of their name. You write it across this lemon. You imagine all the reasons you have to hate and dislike them. You focus it into this lemon. With all of your hatred, all of your anger, you take that knife from before, okay? You use this pencil as a stand-in for right now. Okay? You take it stabby-stabby motion. You slam it in there. Please practice knife safety. Practice fire safety, too, with those candles. If you burn yourself down or stab yourself, Knights of Awakening does not take any responsibility for you, nor does Charles McBride or any of his affiliates or associates. So don't get hurt. Um, just don't. Stabby, stabby this thing with all of your anger, all of your aggression, pouring into it. Then set it outside, pour salt in it. You're pouring salt in the wounds. Visualize this affecting the person as they themselves are theoretically stabbed. Pour the salt in the wounds. The longer you meditate on, on this lemon to make it into them, the more force and anger and hatred you put into it. And the more salt you put into it. And you really don't even need the force and the anger and the hatred. You just need focus. But this is the kind of curse you use when you're really angry. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And then leave it out to rot. Make sure that no wild animals can get a hold of it. No, no. If, if something gets a hold of it and tears it up, even better. Um, don't throw it in a river. Uh, you could throw it into a volcano if you happen to have one of those. If you've got a volcano nearby, am I leading hobbits to your home to do... Anyway. Um, two curses. Again, stuff like this is easy to find. But understanding that you need a gun from time to time and knowing how to load it and fire it is a valuable thing. There are not very many places we can talk about magic, especially curse work. But I do belong to a group called the Order of the Thorn. And we do a lot of discussion on everything from curses, to healing, to manipulation of the universe for your own benefit, such as wealth magic and things like that, to what makes magic what it is, and breaking down our own systems. If you're looking for advice or understanding, you're looking to grow in the arts, it's not a bad group to go to. In fact, the link will be at the bottom of this, along with the link to my Rose Quartz Labyrinth website. I did not pick an easy place to name my store, did I? Or an easy name to name my store. No, I, I, I Dr. seuss that. If you take anything at the end of this message, take this. I'd rather be armed than unarmed at any given point. And it's true. I don't go over enough of the details of how to do this stuff. I'm always talking theory. So let's talk some application. And you know what? If we're going to talk application, we should go in an area which I have some expertise in. And while I've got a lot of expertise in a lot of areas, uh, combat magics and doing damage with magic is probably one of the top for me. As always, folks... You know, thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for, you know, watching us and supporting us. If you enjoyed this episode, 
make sure to let us know in the comment section. Hit us up on Facebook, and if you didn't like it, make sure to let us know in the comment section. Hit us up on Facebook. Make, you know, get get Justin and Allie to beat my rear end for this episode if you didn't like it. If you loved it, get them to throw me a party. Something, you know? But ultimately, if I can give you any message, a final set of words for this, the reason I want you to be armed is because I do care about the safety of all those well-meaning people out there that practice the mystical arts and yet don't have the training in the curse work area to throw fire back when it's hitting them, as it were, that instead kind of get beat down until they're nothing. And I don't like that, that's for sure. So if this helps you with that, maybe it also helps you awaken the night within.